ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My name is Sam Martin Burr and a very warm welcome back to the YouTube channel and to this series where we're doing a little walkthrough of what the khutbah actually says. What I just recited for you is from the very beginning, which we actually covered in the previous lesson. So you can go back and watch that. These lessons on Arabic texts and walkthroughs of passages like this are organized conveniently into a little playlist around the YouTube channel for you guys. So let's get into the second part. So what is said? Um, the next part after what I recited at the beginning of the video is وَأَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ Very nice. So we have وَأَشْهَدُ Any of you who have um, embraced Islam will know أَشْهَدُ You will have heard that before. Or, I mean, anybody, any Muslim really should know that over the age of like four. Um, but um, the verb شَهِدَ means to bear witness to something. The present tense, conjugation of it, I bear witness is أَشْهَدُ and I bear witness. That's what an la. The n means that, and la means no. Ilaha, deity. Ila means a ma'bud, means a worshipped thing. And ila is like in English when we when we do a ila, we do a god with a little g. Ila, la ilaha. There is no deity. Illallahu, except Allahu. What this ilah really means in like an aqidah sense is ma'bud um, bihaqqin is what it really means here. Um, when we say la ilaha illallah, what we really mean is la ma'bud bihaqqin is there's no thing, no thing that is worshipped in right. Right? There's, there's nothing that has the right to be worshipped is what we mean when we say ilaha. There is nothing, there, there is no ilah meaning something that has right to be worshipped except Allah. Allah is the only thing which has right to be worshipped. Wahdahu, he alone. Some of you will know the word wahidun in Arabic means the number one. Wahid, or in uh, colloquial Arabic, they tend to they tend to lean towards saying wahad rather than wahid. But uh, in Fusha, how we say wahid. Good. Wahdahu, him alone. La sharika, a sharik is a partner. La sharika. Just like we had la ilaha with a fatah on the end, we have la sharika. We have no partner, lahu, to him. The li in Arabic, like, well, we kind of get what we mean when we say it in English. If we say there's no partner to him, we, what, what we really mean is he has no partner, right? Li is a way in Arabic of saying, saying have something. I could say, you know, li waladani. I have two boys, I have two sons, right? For example, you can say li and use li for possessing things like that. Um, but when we kind of do like a word for word rendition of it for the Arabic language students, it, it kind of makes sense where we're saying like, La sharika, there is no partner, lahu, to him. Wa ashhadu, we already saw that the we already saw that at the beginning. Wa ashhadu, and I bear witness. Anna Muhammadan. That Muhammadan. So why is it Muhammadan? We've learnt before the name Muhammad. It's not Muhammadan. Well, Muhammadan, it takes fathas because it comes after anna. I don't know if you remember at the very beginning of the previous lesson when we saw in alhamda. So when we have certainly, um, and cer certainly and that, the inna and the anna, they behave the same grammatically. When you learn these in, in Arabic, um, you call them the sisters of inna, other words that kind of make what we call the ism, or in basic terms, just the word that comes after it. But that's pretty much what you need to know it means. Um, we'll take a fatha on the end if it's definite, or two fathas if it's indefinite. And as it's Muhammad, we don't say the Muhammad. We say Muhammad, so it's indefinite. There's a whole discussion that we could have. This is a little side note here about how some names can't take Muhammadan. Like, for example, if it was Yusuf, we can't have what anna Yusufan. Um, but Arabic names, or names in an Arabic pattern, they can do that. We can say Anna Muhammadan um, because Muhammad is an Arab name. We can say Anna Zaydan because Zayd is an Arabic patterned name. Um, there are some exceptions to this, some patterns that are Arabic but can't, like the name Ahmed, for example. But um, but then also there are non-Arabic names that do take kind of Arabic patterns, which can, like for example, the name Lut. You can say Lutan, but Lut wasn't an Arab, you know. And same with Nuh. 
You can say Nuhan, hence when Allah says in Surah Nuh, Inna al-sanna Nuhan ila qawmihi. So um, Nuh wasn't an Arab either, of course. Um, yeah, but it's because they're in an Arab pattern. Like for example, the name Hud, Prophet Hud alayhi salam. Hud, we can say Huden. And Lut and Nuh are in the same pattern as Hud, so it'd be fine. Like if the name Yusuf was just Yus, we could say Anna Yusen. Because it's like it's like Hud and Lut and Nuh. Anyway, I digress. Let's uh, bring it back in, inshallah. Anna Muhammadan. That Muhammad is what? Abduhu, his Abd. His slave, his servant. Wa and Rasuluhu, and his Rasul, and his messenger. A Rasul is a messenger rather than a prophet. It's his final slave and messenger. And a prophet is a Nabi, and there is a significant difference between saying that he's his final messenger and he's his final prophet. In the case of the Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, he is both, but um, a Rasul is um, a, slight, a slight rank higher than, than a Nabi, in the sense that um, a Rasul, in layman's terms, um, you're going to have whole discussions about it, but like, I mean, in, in very simple terms, a Rasul comes with a significant update to the Sharia. That's, that's what a Rasul essentially does, comes with a Rasul, a Risala, a message. Um, yeah, whereas a Nabi doesn't necessarily have a, have a book or have, a, or have an update to the law. Good, okay, so what do we have? Wa ashhadu, and I bear witness. And la ilaha, that there is no deity, illallah, except Allah. Wahdahu, him alone. La sharika lahu, there is no partner to him. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan, and I bear witness that Muhammad, abduhu, is his slave, wa rasuluhu, and his messenger. There's one last thing I want you to pay attention to, inshallah. We've seen two words for that here. We saw the word ashhadu an, and we saw ashhadu anna. When you look for a second, what's the difference between those two? Why in one case, when we say I bear witness that, why are we saying ashhadu an in the first case, and ashhadu anna in the second? So there's one simple reason. We say ashhadu anna when the word that comes after it is an ism. Okay, so in this case, an ism or a noun or a pronoun, like Muhammad, is a, it's a noun, it's a proper noun, it's a name. Um, but it still counts. Anna Muhammadan. Or if you want to say, I bear witness that the man. Ashhadu anna rajula. Ashhadu anna al-bayta. I bear witness that the house. I bear witness that any noun, even if we're going to say, I bear witness that. Um, I bear witness that he. I could say, Ashhadu anna hu abduhu wa rasulu. I could say, I bear witness that he, as in referring to, the, to our Prophet, is his slave and messenger. Abduhu. Uh, sorry, anna hu, we can say. But um, if it's not a noun, then uh, we say an. Ashhadu an, because you can see here, la. La is not a noun. La is not an ism. So that is why. And it even applies with verbs as well. If you wanted to say, I bear witness that. I bear witness that. Um, uh, I bear witness that he killed him, for example. You could say, ashhadu an yaqtulahu. Ashhadu an yaqtulahu. I bear witness that he killed him. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, so that's enough for today, inshallah. I think we've done plenty of grammar. I think we've done plenty of vocab, and we've got an opportunity to kind of pick that apart a little bit. In the next lesson, this will be um, episode 10 of Arabic Text Time, and uh, the third part in this series that we're doing on the khutbah, we will be actually doing an ayah from uh, Surah Ali Imran. It will be the, uh, the 102nd ayah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون. So we will talk about that inshallah. That's what we'll do our entire next lesson on. Um, every single one of you has ever been to the, have been to a Friday prayer or has been to a nikah has probably heard that ayah in your life. So, um, so it's very important for us to have a little conversation about it inshallah. All right, that's everything for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, please don't forget to like it and share it with anybody who you think might benefit from it. Anybody who maybe um, you think doesn't understand the khutbah fully or they've told you, they've confessed to you that they don't understand the khutbah fully, then uh, this will be an opportunity for them to get a bit more of a, a, a grasp on the Arabic language of it. So uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell as well so you get notifications too. So see you guys in the next one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhum.